Hello, everyone. Uh, today we're gonna make a bunny. And <clears throat> this is a wet felted bunny. You can do this with your children. I think it's a good idea to make the initial bunny shape for them though. So let's get started. You have a piece of wool fleece, like about this size, and this is the length of my arm approximately. And this is really the hardest part, I think. So <clears throat> you start by laying the wool in the palm of your hand, and you're going to roll it until it's in this bean shape as tightly as you can. So I'm going to keep tucking in the sides like that and pushing that nice and tight against, I'm pushing it against my pointer and tucking in the sides all the while. Otherwise it would just roll into a very wide roll and we don't want that. We want to just keep making it into this little bunny bean. And uh, using my thumb to kind of push it down, tucking it in, tucking it in, pushing it down, like that. <clears throat> until you have this bunny bean. It's gonna look something like this. And it's squishy, but there's a firm center. And it's overlapping here. Here's the end, and I'm, I'm kind of tucking that around, kind of like an ace bandage, because the the wool, crinkled up wool, works a lot like an ace bandage. You know, when you pull an ace bandage and then wrap it around and it kind of tightens up around the other ace bandage. This is a similar thing. Okay, I'm gonna pour hot water, as hot as you can stand. And if you're working with children, it might have to be a little bit cooler. So I'm going to submerge this, but I don't want to just let it be free because I don't want it to unravel. So I'm going to make a little house for it. And that is so hot. Oh my goodness. Don't make it that hot. <laughs> and this is the part that's a little bit like a leap of faith because as soon as you submerge it, it starts to come apart. So just have faith. Might want to squeeze it a little because the water may only be on the outside layer. You want it to get all the way down. And this is wet, but not too wet. Now I'm going to take a little bit, this a little bit of soap. If you put too much on, it's going to be such a soapy project. You don't really need that much. And now I'm going to turn it in the, this is the direction that that overlap happens. So I'm going to turn it so that as I smooth my hands around, it isn't, it isn't peeling away the, the wool sheet. Just squeezing out some of the water because this has a lot of water. And you want it to be wet, but not sopping wet. And now I'm kind of patting it very firmly and make a little surface here and when I'm doing this with children I usually say pat 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 or clap 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 because they tend to do it with their fingertips and I think you have all of this nice surface and get the ends too I only put a tiny little bit of soap in, and this has so much soap. 
<clears throat> so as I'm as I'm doing this, I'm kind of patting it from one hand to the other. This gives the wool lots of friction. Don't forget about the ends. And you can, after it's in a good, nice, good, firm shape where it doesn't seem like it will fall apart, you can start rubbing it. And all of this friction and rubbing and patting and the hot water causes the wool fleece or batting, wool batting, to felt together. Here too, as you're doing this, you have to be careful it doesn't turn into kind of a, a long shape. You want to keep pushing it back, keeping in mind that you're you're aiming for a bunny here. <clears throat> so that's close to the shape you're going to want. And I'm going to rinse some of that. Squeeze some of it out and just keep patting. And this is this is definitely starting to felt. And as I'm doing this, I'm imagining that there's going to be a tail at one end and a bunny face at the other. So I might start picturing at which end will this be? I should say too that can't be perfectionists here. Every bunny will be a little different. If there are 12 people watching this and making it, there will be 12 different bunnies. In fact, I would love to see pictures of your bunnies when you're done. Okay, so you're just gonna keep doing that and you can do this for a good 10 minutes. The more you do it, the firmer it will be and the better end result you'll have. We are going to be cutting this, and I'll show you how. That's how we get the ears, and the firmer it is inside, the less the firmer the ears will be. Okay, so once you've done this for about 10 minutes, and I have not done this for about 10 minutes, I have one ready here to go, but um, for the video purposes, after 10 minutes, you wanna rinse this under running water, very hot water, and you can give it gentle squeezes as you keep patting it under the hot water and get a lot of the soap out without losing your shape. And then you can put your your wet hot, um, bean shape off to the side until it dries. So what I have here is a dry one relatively dry and uh, so just going back to this one uh, before you send it to dry you can you can kind of sculpt the beginnings so I already have a little tail here <laughs> it kind of appeared and I just I'm kind of pressing out a little shape that has the beginnings of bunny ears and that will go to the side to dry so this is the one that I waited to dry. And I've got my scissors and you can see these were pretty far back. So I'm gonna start something like that. And you're kind of cutting in deeper maybe than you imagine. Uh, okay, we've got one ear. And then next to it, try to make it even-ish, although, you know, bunny ears are imperfect. And I feel like that's a little too much face, so I'm going to cut in a little bit more. I'm going to get a different pair of scissors. I 
there we go. So just cutting underneath there like that and being very, very careful because you don't want to cut the ears off. And now you've got these sort of, uh, kind of look like bat ears. So I'm going to turn them in a little bit so that they're more like listening bunny ears. Just give them a little shaping. And I would say that um, in this way, they almost look like um, pig ears. So I would trim a little bit on the inside. Very careful not to trim too much. And I think that will make it look more like a bunny and less like a piglet. Okay. So a little bit of sculpting. Now you can take a ribbon and I didn't have a ribbon at home so I have this string and I'm going to put it under the neck kind of in line with the ears. And this will help give it a more of a head. And I'm going to tie that nice and tight. I can go down. Always kind of reshaping it with a bow. And this, I think this looks much nicer with a ribbon than the string. But the string is sweet also. And I'll trim that. So you can see this one has a ribbon, a very thin ribbon, which I, I like. Um, but whatever you have will be just fine. And some of you might have felting needles. You can use those to sculpt the face a little bit more. And now I want to show you how to put the eyes on. So you have a piece of black embroidery floss and I'm just going to kind of practice and see where the best, this looks like a good place, I know that's too far apart here, I would try to look from all sides, I think bunny's noses are a little more pointed. So it goes like this, across, and then <clears throat> across, back, through, like that. And I wouldn't tighten that all the way, and back across. And back. So I think I tighten that a little bit too much. Because then they kind of disappear into the wool. Oh dear. Yep, see how that disappeared all the way? Okay, so that's the second one. I can cut this <clears throat> off now. my end there. There we go. I might pull this out because it got buried in the wool. And so just back and forth a couple of times to make these sweet little eyes. Last one. And I 
get it really careful not to tighten it too much and then snip and you can keep shaping that and there you have it a bunny for your and there's a little tail there for your Easter basket There we go. Good luck and enjoy.